was out on a walk in the woods, close to my house. I heard a strange noise coming from the woods. When I looked, I saw an about 2.5 meters high creature, standing on two legs like a human, but the body was covered with fur and had a head like a dog. I directly started to run and did not stop until I was safe at home. When I ran, I heard that the creature was following me, but it stopped after a few hundred meters. I had just gotten off a bus at the train station and was walking through a small shortcut. As I was walking down the street, I noticed someone at the end of that street standing in the dark, watching me. I didn't think much about it, not at that time. I checked my phone for the time and saw that it was 11.06 p.m. When I looked back up, I noticed two pairs of glowing yellow, gold-like eyes. Then I remembered that I had seen someone or something in that spot before. I stopped walking so I could get a better look at it, and suddenly it went down on all fours and ran off. I could feel my heart beating and my fear rising. I waited for a minute to calm down. After that, I went on walking and looked back at my phone. It was 11.08 p.m. When I looked back up, I saw it was running back to the edge of the footpath I needed to use to cross the street. When I first saw it, it was on all fours. It then started to stand on two feet and was watching me. I could feel its eyes staring at me. Then a few seconds later, as I was still walking, trying to act like I couldn't see it, it went back down on all fours and ran down the road I needed to use to get home. As I rounded the end of the street, I could see it running down the side of the road, heading towards the forest. I haven't heard a lot about encounters in Norway, Scandinavia, not even Europe, but here is mine. A little background info, I'm a 27 year old guy from Norway who lives in the western part of Norway. I work and have a girlfriend. I'm 194 centimeters tall or 6 foot 4 in the US, 230 pounds, fairly athletic and not scared of much here in life. But that night, I got incredibly scared. I haven't walked, camped, or done anything in the woods here since. I have been in the woods since, but not in this particular part of the country. I have always loved the forest. It's so quiet. I love being alone. If I have spare time, I always like to do things outside, whether it be fishing, jogging, playing soccer, basketball, hiking, or whatever. Now on to the encounter. The day was very normal. It was a Saturday afternoon. I had packed my tent and some food and was heading to the local mountain for a one night camping trip. It wasn't a very difficult hike, but it was a very steep one. After two to three hours, even though I'm in a respectable shape, I am heavy and long. I was pretty tired. I didn't have any mobile phone or clock with me, but my best guess is that the time was around 8 p.m. or so. It's not that easy to guess the time, since the sun is up almost all day and all night when it's summertime in Norway. It was a nice and clear Norwegian evening. It was typical summer weather. I made a fire and cooked some food. I had a couple hot dogs and a pack of marshmallows with me. After a couple of hours, I had eaten my food. Actually, I felt a little sick because I ate probably 10 to too many of the marshmallows. I had enjoyed my meal and taking in the heat of the fire thinking what a lovely evening it was. Eventually, it started to get somewhat dark. I'm going to say the time was probably around 11 p.m. I had planned to kick back and read, but 
but it became a little too dark to do that. Sure, I could see all and around me, but it became a little hard on the eyes to concentrate on the letters. I probably was a little too tired also. Suddenly, I heard a noise from a bush to my right. I turned to look in that direction and saw it just standing there. It was standing to my right and kind of ahead of me. I've listened to reports and they all say it's some big seven to nine foot monster of a beast. This one really wasn't that big. I would say it was six feet at the most, but it shook me hard. In one moment, I was enjoying a nice evening by myself, and then the next moment, I felt extremely startled. It was breathing heavy, like a very tired man, but it sounded animal-like, wild and weird. It sounded like it had throat problems, or slime in its throat, or something. I really don't know how to describe it with writing. I was still sitting at this point and just looked at it. I believe I was actually frozen in fear. I have never, ever encountered anything other than a deer in these woods. The most dangerous animal we have in this area is probably a fox. The creature was frozen as well. It was standing on two legs with its arms down at its sides. I can't say how many seconds we both stayed like this, of course. It felt like forever, an eternity. I couldn't see its eyes because they were dark and kind of in the shadow of its brow or sockets, and it also had some hair, but its head was fixed on me. That I could tell. I was just sitting there, paying attention to what it was doing. I didn't utter a word at it or yell. It just wasn't something I considered doing. I was afraid of making the first move. Now you know how a cat slowly moves its paws ahead when it thinks it's safe or when it thinks its prey isn't paying attention. Well, to me, that was what it started doing. The incident ended with me throwing a handful of red-hot glowing sticks from the fire at it. When I did that, it bolted. I will tell more if you contact me. I was on patrol as a deputy sheriff for the county and was usually assigned to the Highway 13 and 30 corridors. However, I recall that particular July 1st, however, because a young man, 16 or 17 years old at the time, had been sucked into a storm drain which emptied into Cedar Lake near the Quaker Oats plant. This is a place with heavy foot traffic, and located in an urban setting. The area is also bordered by Mohawk Park. As the search went on into the night, the local PD got the county involved. I parked my cruiser at what I believe was the electric company storage yard. The yard had what I estimated to be a ten-foot fence that ran parallel to a paved bike trail on the other side of which runs a large concrete spillway to siphon off flood waters. I arrived at what I estimate to be roughly 11.30 p.m. or 11.45. I estimate only because I assure you there never was nor will be an official statement on record with my name on it telling this story. As I left the lot, I was at the north end of the lake and headed west on foot. There was a lot of brush and saplings between the spillway and trail, so I proceeded on to the point that the trail turned south, near where Cedar Lake empties into the Cedar River, under the railroad tracks leading into Quaker Oats. There are multiple tracks at the turn I mentioned before, and only the track furthest from myself had a train on it. With my attention on the spillway, I hardly noticed at first a faint red-colored light a distance north from my position. It was coming down the track on the other side of the train. I had thought it perhaps the taillights of a car not being from the patrol route. I had no knowledge that there was, in fact, no road in that direction. There ain't much things in the world that scare me. Put simply, 
I've seen some shit in my fucking days. But nothing prepared me for that night. The lights disappeared, and that was that. Or so I had figured. About five minutes have passed before I hear a snorting, almost sniffing sound coming from the other side of the tracks. When I turned, the first thing I saw were the eyes. They glowed a dull red. The thing was at least eight foot tall, pushing 450 pounds. I judge this by the fact that I am 6'4", and weigh around 280. I turned to my light, and to this day wish I hadn't. It had pointed ears, and a long muzzle, and it looked me right in the face before it bolted into the timber. It was not a mask, and it was NOT a person in a costume. Who would walk up on an armed man with a police radio? in full uniform and risk getting shot. I remember it was surreal. So final, I guess. I know what's in the dark now. People can say or think what they want, but even with a chambered round and full magazine and a Glock 40, it didn't feel like enough power. I unholstered and fell back towards the trail and to the electric company storage yard. Putting the fence to my back, I made a hasty retreat to the lot where my cruiser laid. I don't think I holstered my pistol until I got out of the park. I never spoke of it then, and honestly don't know why I am now. But one thing is for certain. It knew I was there, and it was watching my every move. I'll never go back, and I no longer work with the department since becoming a minister but I still carry a Glock with hollow point rounds tipped with silver if, and I rarely do, leave my home at night. I was 14 years old and lived in central Louisiana at the time. My mother had always been interested in the paranormal. She buy copies of UFO magazines and watch documentaries on Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster, etc., so I just grew up being interested in things like that, at face value. I always believed in them, but I never had any inkling that werewolves, dogmen, or whatever could possibly exist. Anyway, I lived in a mobile home park, which was on a two-lane highway, Highway 28 East to be exact. It was a long street with a cul-de-sac type of dead end. At the dead end, to the left, was the only brick home in the park. Straight ahead was thin woods and several trails going off in every direction. To the right, slightly, was a deep ditch that people had dumped junk and trash in, like old washing machines, broken laundry baskets, or whatever. A thin metal wire fence ran from the ditch across into the woods and out of sight. We, the kids in the neighborhood, had what we called a club, where we would all gather together and hang out. Some of us had gathered busted or discarded dining room chairs and placed them in the center of what was the thinnest areas of the trees. I had come there to figure out where to put everything. Beyond the deep ditch, further into the woods, was a small stream with hills on each side. An enormous old oak tree had fallen beside the stream, on the side I was on. I spotted an old metal folding table near the stream and went down to inspect it. I thought it would be a good item to put in the center of the chairs. It seemed to be in good condition, so I decided to head home. I figured I'd get it the next morning. The next morning, I made my way toward the metal wire fence which somehow, I don't know why, had been bent on both its top and bottom inwards toward the center of the fence. I was about to duck under it when I heard the distinct sound of sniffing, so I turned to see what it was. Standing on the other side of the stream was a seven to eight foot tall creature, sniffing the air. Its head was turned slightly. The first thought that entered my mind was, 
Oh. My. God. Werewolves. Are real. It stood on two. Powerfully built muscular legs. Which ended in enormous paws. It had no tail. It had a massive chest. As well as extremely muscular arms and hands. The hands seemed to have the same kind of pads that a paw has. But they were arranged differently. It had a wolf-like head and tall pointed ears. The eyes glowed red. The ears were in proportion to the head. It had a snout or muzzle. It kept sniffing the air as it stepped over the tree trunk like it was nothing. I would have had to physically climb it to get over it. I thought it was coming after me. It stopped and seemed to be breathing or panting. But there was this deep rumble that accompanied it. I decided to get out of there before it did see me and ducked up under the fence. I ran to my bike which was parked off the road and pedaled my butt home. I never went into those woods again. Not after that. About a month and a half to two months later we moved to Mississippi. It wasn't until many years later that I discovered the term dogman. It scared me, but also started me on my fascination with ancient myths, legends, werewolves, and many other non-Bigfoot cryptids. I had been up all night at a friend's house in the town of Tribby, playing video games. I didn't want to sleep there, so I said goodbye and headed home. I knew my car was making a funny noise, but I thought surely I could get home. Well, I was driving down a long, dark stretch of highway with nothing but forest and a few sparse country houses. I was coming up to the top of a long hill when suddenly my car stops and it starts pulling forward. The engine revved, but no gears would engage. My CV joint just went out. I was hoping that wouldn't happen. Well, I had no way of getting it home now. So I backed up, down the road, in neutral, and off, onto a side road. I thought about staying and sleeping in the car, but something told me not to do that. I had an eerie feeling of being watched. So I grabbed my video game case and my machete that I had made from a lawnmower blade and started walking. I kept noticing the feeling of being watched and I felt like I was being followed. I kept looking behind me and saw nothing, but when a car passed by heading in the direction behind me, it illuminated the area with its headlights and I saw something behind me in the ditch, hunched down low. It was huge, and I could tell it looked like an animal, but had humanoid features. It seemed to have arms, but its head was most definitely canine. Its head was very large, and its eyes glowed red when the lights hit them. Well, I've seen enough werewolf movies to know that this wasn't a good situation. So I started running. That probably wasn't the best choice because I know that predators like to chase things that run from them. When the car had passed, the creature had darted into the trees. I thought that was the best time to run, so I did. I ran for about a quarter mile and looked back, but didn't see anything, so I kept walking. Well, I kept checking behind me and off to the side, where the tree line was. I knew it was still out there, and probably following me. And yes, I was afraid. But I was also prepared to defend myself with my machete, if need be. I came up onto another hill and saw a farmhouse, off into the distance. To my left, down a long, dirty driveway. The moon was almost full, and the area around the house was clear, so I could see a guy out there, messing with his truck as I walked by. Then he turned on a spotlight on his truck and spotted me with it. I kept walking, because his property said no trespassing and many out there wouldn't hesitate to unload on a strange trespasser. 
I knew it was close again, possibly closer now, and I was about to turn around and face it when another car came over the top of the hill and passed by me, going behind me again. I followed with my eyes and noticed this time it was a cop, so thinking quickly, I dropped my machete on the edge of the grass and waved. As he passed, his lights hit the ditch as well, and I saw that the dog man was very close, but it darted into the trees again when the light hit it. Thankfully, a moment later, the cop stopped and turned around. He came back and asked me what I was doing out there, so I told him what had happened with my car. I didn't mention the dog man, though. He may have thought I was crazy, but I asked him for a ride home, and he agreed. After wanting to go check and make sure my car wasn't blocking the road, after we checked it, he agreed to take me home. I don't know what might have happened that night if he hadn't shown up, and it was the only time I was genuinely happy to see a police officer. My grandfather told me this story when I was a teenager. I'm 52 now. My granddad grew up in the woods of central New Brunswick, in a very remote area where only survivalists go now. Their whole family lived out in the sticks. They lived by hunting, fishing, trapping, and some logging. Granddad said when he was a teenager, he and his older brother Duke were up in the early hours checking trap lines on an old motorbike. It was early fall. Frost was on the grass and early morning mists still hung around the forest edges. He was rolling cigarettes with his brother and they were out of matches. So they dipped a bunch of cloth in the gas tank and ignited it off the coil wire while Duke kicked the bike over. The sound of a bike being kicked over without an ignition it's sort of like an animal call. That's how my granddad described it. Anyways, just as they started smoking their cigarettes, my grandfather noticed something bounding through the tree, coming towards them. Granddad said it ran in a way a bear did, but it stopped several yards away from them and stood up on its hind legs. It was still too far away to tell what it was but they assumed it was a black bear because they are very common in New Brunswick. That's when it began walking upright towards them. As it got nearer, my granddad said it looked like a huge werewolf. His family origin was German, so this was not unknown. It got as close as 20 feet away from them and then began to eye them closely. It sniffed their smokes and then turned and hopped or ran back to the trees. Granddad said they were not scared. He said they were only shocked that such a creature was living in the woods. Granddad said it was taller than any man, had a huge head, evil eyes, long and upright ears, hands with long claws, and had hair all over its body. I can't remember what color he said its fur was, but he said it had wolf-like legs. Anyways, that was his story. And he had many more. My first encounter happened late at night, while driving home to Snohomish from Sultan, the two towns being about 10 miles apart. I was with my mother, and we had just finished dropping a friend off at her home in Sultan. It was late October, and there was an unusual storm going on that night that everyone talked about the following day. Tremendous cloud-to-cloud -cloud lightning, and a very cold, dry wind, with no rain. Bright flashes of light, loud thunder, and lots of leaves blowing around. After dropping our friend off, we were on a stretch of the road that's very dark, with farmland on either side of the highway, and both sides having densely wooded hills. We were driving a 91 Honda Accord, and at this one particular spot in the road, Something caught my eye, off to the left side, which was a farm field, and there was a break in the guardrail for a dirt road going into the field. Right when we were even to this break, I saw what looked like a huge dog coming up, and right then, 
and ran in front of our car, and I hit it. We could see the top of its back, which we both swear looked more like a hyena at this point than a dog. It had to be huge to see its back over the hood of the car when you're sitting pretty low to the ground at a Honda Accord. Its fur was shaggy brown and mottled with dark spots, just like a hyena, and its front seemed higher up than its back. The headlights lit it up as it ran right in front of our car, and we could feel it get hit, but didn't see it go either up in the air or off to the right side of the car. It was running from the left side of the highway to the right. We were driving westward. It sent my car into an uncontrollable swerve back and forth into the oncoming lane, and I just prayed that I could get it under control to keep from getting into a head-on collision with what looked maybe like a Ford Aerostar van. A calmness came over me, and I felt like my guardian angel had taken control of the steering because we missed the van by just a few inches. After going a little ways further, we were both so shook up I pulled off to the side of the road. My mother wanted to go look for the dog because we both love animals and felt bad about hitting something. But... I had a bad feeling about looking for this so-called dog because it had looked so strange and I was afraid of it. It was dark and stormy. It didn't feel safe and I just wanted to get home. We got back in the car and stopped at a little gas station. When we first got into Monroe, which is the next town between our town and Sultan, we got out to look at the front of my car thinking surely there would be some evidence of hitting something that large. We were going to the highway speed when we hit it, which is 60 miles an hour. Like a dent, some fur or blood. But there was nothing there. Not a scratch. The whole thing had a very supernatural feel to it. The look of this dog, which was huge and looked more like a hyena, just didn't seem right. Neither did the timing of it running in front of us, like it wanted to make a stop on that dark stretch of road and get out of my car, which we did, but we got right back in. I never saw it on two legs. It ran on all fours, but there was something so calculated about the way it came up to the highway and looked at our car and ran in front of it. It seemed planned. It was such a strange electromagnetic type of storm that night, too. The next day, people we knew that lived miles and miles apart in many different directions all talked about the storm, and one particularly loud thunderclap that shook everyone's homes. They all thought it was directly over their house, but they were all miles apart. I have three more encounters which occurred after this first one. I'm pretty sure this happened in October of 97, no later than 98. It was later in the evening when I was driving back to my in-law's house by myself and was going down a dirt road. I saw something in the ditch up ahead and on the right and didn't really know what it was until I got up far enough so that my headlights could catch it. I didn't know anything about dogmen, not up until a couple of years ago. This thing had an outline of a huge dog, but when I got closer... It turned and looked at me. I just floored it. It didn't really bother me until I noticed it looking at me, and I saw that it was actually grasping what it was eating. I got back and didn't exactly say what I saw. I just asked them if there were any big dogs or wolves up where they lived. My father-in-law just laughed and said, No. Then he asked why. I didn't say anything. The thing I will never forget are the reddish-orange eyes that just kept staring at me. I never saw it, but in 1975, I was newly married, about 21 years old, and had a small baby. My sister, who was a teenager, was visiting us. My husband, my sister, and I had all gone to our bedrooms to settle down and go to sleep. I would say it was around 11 or 12 at midnight. 
We were just starting to relax and get sleepy when, out of nowhere, there was this horrible, loud howl. I mean, it was so loud it made my chest vibrate and my ears hurt. The sound was not human, but had a guttural, human-like mix with what sounded like a wolf. We were living in a mobile home at the time, and it howled just outside our back door in the hallway near our bedroom. We jumped out of bed, looked at each other, and both said at the same time, What the hell was that? My husband was ten years older than I was, and was an avid hunter. He wasn't the kind of guy to scare easily. His face drained of color. My sister came running down the hallway, white as a ghost, and said, What was that? I told her I didn't know. My husband said he was getting his rifle and grabbed it out of the closet. He opened up the back door and yelled out into the wind, You better get the fuck out of here, or I will blow your head clean off. He listened a moment before I yelled at him to please shut the door. He did, and we never heard any more after that. Needless to say, we stayed up all night, afraid to go to sleep. I have never forgotten that howl. There is no way it was a dog or coyotes. I have heard both howl. It wasn't a guy joking around either. It was so loud, there is no way a human could have made that sound. My encounter happened in February of 2009. In November 2008, I broke my arm and was basically stranded at home. I was unable to drive or work and was going stark raving mad with boredom. My best friend would drive the 35 miles north from Muskegon to pick me up in Shelby, just to take me back to Muskegon for a visit at her home. She'd take me to dinner or out to see a movie, only to deliver me home to Shelby after whichever activity. It was truly a selfless act of love. One night, she was driving me home. It was very late, well after 11 p.m. We were on US 31 northbound, around the Rothbury area of Oceana County, on the expressway. Being February in Michigan, the roads were naturally snowy, with scattered patches of ice and bare pavement. There was a small pickup truck in front of us, about five car lengths ahead of her car, when all of a sudden we saw something on two legs dart out from the left, just in front of an overpass. It ran across the two-lane highway and hit the back of the small pickup in the rear quarter panel, causing the pickup to fishtail. Luckily, the driver of the small pickup regained control, but they didn't stop to see what collided with their truck. If anything, it seemed to pick up speed and get the heck out of there. My friend and I watched in utter astonishment as the creature finished running to the right and disappeared into the weeds and trees along the highway. It didn't even break stride after it hit the truck. We looked at one another, sat in silence for a moment, and then I said, Did you see that? She said, Yeah, I saw it. We finished the ride to my house in silence, both lost in our thoughts. It looked like a giant dog or wolf. It was on its hind legs, not all fours, and it was at least seven feet tall. It had pointed ears, a kind of mane around its neck, much like a lion's mane. It was dark in color, and its hind legs looked like a dog's, which was even more pronounced as it was running only on its hind legs. Its front legs were freely swinging as it ran, and it seemed to have its mouth slightly open. It had an elongated face, very much like a collie face, and a long nose protruding from its face. Its face was covered by longish hair. The entire creature seemed to be covered in long hair, but I can't recall if it had a tail. Something tells me it did, but I can't recall for certain so I don't want to say it did, when in fact I'm not sure. We thought perhaps it may have been one of the Michigan dogmen that are said to be in our area. Being a former Native American area, we have heard the stories but never met anyone that had a first-hand encounter. It was always someone who knew someone who knew someone who saw something. But now, my best friend and I definitely saw it. 
We had a first-hand experience. Our encounter was brief and over in a matter of mere moments, but it was front and center of us, and we saw it clear as a bell. Well, my ghouls and ghoulettes, I hope you all enjoyed these true encounters slash tales. Uh, if you like stuff like this, leave a comment let me know. Perhaps we can do some more of it. Until next time.